It's very surprising to me how many people still don't know that keto flu is real. So in today's video, we're going to go over what it is, what symptoms you can expect, and how to mitigate the worst of its effects when you are starting a carnivore diet. I'm Jenny. I've been doing a carnivore diet experiment since December of 2022. I've lost almost 50 pounds. And let me tell you, my keto flu was hardcore. I was aware of the keto flu before I started carnivore, but actually going through it was just a whole different ball game. Mine was brutal. And the only reason I stuck it out was because I lost eight pounds my first month on carnivore. And that's the most weight I've ever lost with any way of eating in my entire life. I created this video to help you avoid the very worst keto flu symptoms so you don't have to go through the hell that I went through. So what is keto flu? Keto flu is basically sugar or carbohydrate withdrawal. It's very similar to a drug withdrawal. Anytime you start a ketogenic diet, which is any diet in which you've reduced the carbs enough to where you have detectable levels of ketones in your bloodstream. Usually that starts around 0.5 millimoles per liter. If you are not fat adapted already, you are most likely going to experience some keto flu. Carnivore is basically the lowest carbohydrate version of a ketogenic diet that you can do. And there's a lot of people out there that are consuming zero carbs on carnivore. Let's talk about what symptoms you should look out for. Keto flu got its name because it has symptoms that are very similar to the flu. Symptoms include fatigue, nausea, diarrhea, sleep disturbances, restlessness, anxiety, racing heart or palpitations, frequent urination, nightmares, intense sugar or carb cravings, brain fog, dizziness, irritability, muscle cramping, and increased thirst. While those are the most common, some people also experience food aversions where they just can't stand the thought of eating another egg or another piece of meat. I don't know if I would consider that a keto flu symptom, but it's very common the first month of carnivore, so be sure to keep that in the back of your mind. Also very commonly reported is constipation, but that can be a couple of different things. It truly could be constipation. If you're not eating enough fat and your stools are very hard or pellet-like, then increase your fat consumption and that should even out. The other thing though is that when you're only consuming meat and animal products, your body will not be creating as much fecal matter in the first place. Meat and animal products are highly absorbable forms of nutrition, so your body is going to be utilizing most of what you're consuming. There's just not a lot of waste products left over. So you may not be constipated, you may just be creating less fecal matter. That typically does even out though after the first month or two on carnivore. What are some ways that you can mitigate the worst of your keto flu symptoms? The first thing is to make sure you are drinking electrolytes that first month or two on carnivore. Your electrolytes can get all out of whack when you stop eating carbohydrates. You're going to be losing a lot of water weight and with water go electrolytes. So you need to be replacing those. The brand that I use is Element. They are the sponsor of today's video and this is actually the perfect video for them to sponsor. Because when you're early on in carnivore and you're experiencing keto flu symptoms, having electrolytes on hand can help you feel better quickly. I always recommend taking one packet of the raw unflavored element first thing in the morning, even if you're not feeling any keto flu symptoms. And then you can drink several more packets throughout the day as needed. They come in these convenient packets, which are great when you're traveling and they contain 1000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. So you can head to the link in the description. It's drinkelement.com slash Jenny Midditch. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Jenny Midditch and get your free sample pack with any order today. And that is for the packets. It's also for their new sparkling water cans. Another way you can mitigate or possibly even avoid keto flu symptoms completely is by easing into carnivore. If you slow Slowly ramp down your carbohydrate intake while at the same time building up your animal protein and animal fat intake. You're going to allow your body the time it needs to adjust to using fat as fuel instead of carbohydrates. This is especially important if you're eating a lot of high oxalate fruits and vegetables such as spinach, sweet potatoes, kiwis, raspberry, and chocolate. I have a whole video that talks about whether you should go cold turkey onto carnivore or whether you should ease into it. It'll be released two weeks after this video. So if it is out, I will link it at the end. If you don't see it at the end, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever my new videos come out and you can watch that video and decide is cold turkey or easing into carnivore a better option for me.
Another thing that can help with keto flu is bone broth. You can make your own or you can purchase a really high quality pre-made one. Just be sure to add salt to taste. Another thing you can do is make sure you're eating enough food. Sometimes the fatigue issues come from simply not eating enough calories or nutrients. The nutrient of concern for most people is fat. A common mistake people make when they're starting carnivore is not consuming enough fat or consuming very lean meats. You have to think of it this way. Your body is a vehicle. You can either have fat or carbohydrates or a combo of both as your fuel. And then the protein is your building blocks or the structure of your vehicle. If you stop consuming carbohydrates, you have to make sure you're getting enough fat. Otherwise your vehicle is going to run out of gas really quickly. So be sure that you are getting enough fat when you are starting carnivore. I typically recommend 70% fat to 30% protein. I will put a link to a video right up here and in the description that goes into what the heck that means if that's confusing. If you're running into diarrhea or loose stools, be sure to cut out hot rendered fats in the very beginning. This includes the fat that is in the pan after cooking a pound of ground beef. That would be considered hot rendered fat. Or if you're melting tablespoons of butter and pouring that over your meat, that would be considered hot rendered fat as well. That can really get your bowel movements going quickly. So you don't want to be eating the hot rendered fats. Instead, you want to do cold or room temperature fats. So cold butter, a carnivore bar is like a pemmican. That's a room temperature fat that is stable and won't cause you to have excessive diarrhea. Also the fat that is on a steak. So after you cook the steak, there's still fat on that steak. That's that's fine, it still has a lot of its structure. It's the hot rendered fats that can really uh, get the diarrhea going or the loose stools. So if you're having problems with that in the beginning of carnivore with your keto flu symptoms and everything, just try to cut those hot rendered fats. If you're running into heart palpitations, anxiety, racing heart, things like that, make sure that you're paying attention to your electrolytes. That can be a very common symptom when your electrolytes are out of whack. Those are also just very common carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. So if it gets really bad, like unbearable, just eat some vegetables or some fruit, a little bit of carb, and that feeling should go away pretty quickly. That'll also just show you that it truly is carbohydrate withdrawal. And for everybody, make sure you're not getting dehydrated. Sometimes when you're just focusing on eating meat and getting the fat right and the protein right, you completely forget about hydration. It's very common. So make sure you're just drinking enough water in general. That can be very helpful. Finally, keto flu does not last forever. For most people, the keto flu lasts for between one to three weeks. If your keto flu goes beyond that, you are probably oxalate dumping. A quick way to know if you are dealing with oxalates is brew a cup of black tea and drink that. Within about 30 minutes, if you're feeling better, then you are doing some oxalate dumping. If that is the case, I recommend picking up a copy of Sally Norton's book called Toxic Superfoods. I'll put a link to it in the description along with a free month of Audible so you can listen to it for free if you'd like to. She's like the queen of oxalates and that book is going to be very eye-opening for you. She has a whole plan on how to slowly reduce the carbs and the high oxalate fruits and vegetables in order to minimize the amount of oxalate dumping you're doing. Once you make it through the keto flu, the world is your oyster. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. I'm I'm gonna pop a couple of videos up on the screen that I think you may enjoy. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.